Now let's move to the next reaction. This reaction is called anti Markovnikov addition and we use peroxide in this reaction. Last time the reaction we studied, I didn't use the name Markovnikov as such, but that was a Markovnikov addition reaction. In that reaction, the reaction went via carbocation mechanism. Suppose this was the alkene in the last reaction that we studied and we added HBr to it. Then in this reaction, first as I told you, hydrogen would come to ask for electron because this is the having pl del, del plus charge and this hydrogen will get, a get attached to this carbon and a carbocation will be formed on this carbon and subsequently bromide ion that would come out of HBr would come and attack in the next step. So what effectively will happen is a hydrogen will get attached to this carbon and a bromine will get attached to this carbon. Now when this happens, when a hydrogen gets attached to a terminal carbon and bromine gets attached to an internal carbon, this is called Markovnikov addition rule. Now Markovnikov was a scientist, he, he, he did some reaction, studied the product and gave his rule. Now this rule have been there before we know about stabilizing effects of hyperconjugation and resonance and formation of these carbocations and free radical. Now we understand after studying hyperconjugation and carbocation stabilization that bromine should get attached to an internal carbon because at for the first place carbocation should be formed in, at the internal carbon because in the internal carbon there would be more extent of hyperconjugation that will stabilize carbocation. So if carbocation is formed in the internal carbon, then that's where that's where bromide ion would come and get attached. So bromine should get attached to our internal carbon. This we understand very well. But this rule was given prior to the our understanding of carbocations and their stabilizing effect. So this was mere uh, rule given by the mere reading of the products from various reactions. But nevertheless, this is called Markovnikov rule that hydrogen will get attached to the outer carbon and bromine will get attached to the internal carbon. And that's what we did in the last reaction. So that was Markovnikov addition of HBr. In this reaction, we are going to study anti Markovnikov addition of HBr. And by the name, it's pretty clear that in this kind of addition, bromine should get attached to a terminal carbon and hydrogen should atta get attached to internal carbon. Let's see the mechanism, why at all should that happen. Now the reaction takes place in three steps and the, the way we named photohalogenation of alkene, the same, in the same manner we'll name the steps for this reaction. In step number one, the step number one is called chain initiation. In this what happens, actually whenever we want to do a reaction of a alkene, suppose this is the alkene and when we add HBr, apart from HBr we have to add a peroxide. Now this peroxide is responsible for this anti Markovnikov addition. If this peroxide is not added, then the reaction won't be anti Markovnikov, won't follow anti Markovnikov rule, it would follow Markovnikov rule. We'll see why, but this is peroxide. Oxygen, single bond oxygen is called is called peroxy linkage. And in a compound where we have peroxy linkage, that is called peroxide. Now this R can be any group as such. It can be aromatic, aliphatic, cyclic, whatever. But there has to be an oxygen, single bond oxygen. Right? So in the reaction starts by peroxide. This peroxide. Some amount of radiation is given on this peroxide and due to that, this peroxide breaks very easily. The reason is this peroxy linkage is very weak because both oxygen has two pair of lone pairs and uh, there would be repulsion among them. These lone pairs will be repulsing each other and to mitigate that repulsion, oxygen would increase the distance between their nucleuses so that when the distance increase the repulsion the extent of repulsion would decrease but when that happens suppose this was the overlapping of orbital 
between this was the extent of overlapping between the two orbitals when it, when the length when the bond length is normal that means when oxygen hasn't moved apart to decrease the repulsion when it moves apart these orbitals also move apart and the extent of overlapping decreases when we bring these two orbitals closer the extent of overlapping will increase when we pull them apart the extent of overlapping decreases so to decrease the repulsion the atom the distance between nuclei increase uh, but with that increased distance the extent of overlapping also decreases so the bond between oxygen single bond oxygen is a weak bond because of poor overlapping now since it is weak so it will break easily so when our radiation is given it breaks and forms ro dot this is the first step of the reaction now oxygen being most second most electronegative element the deficiency of electron on oxygen is not stable this o dot is having deficiency of one electron because this oxygen is having seven electron in its outermost shell so what happens is this ro dot goes for reaction to complete its octet now in the reaction in the in the system we have hbr we have taken alkene hbr and this peroxide now this hbr will provide hydrogen this o dot will abstract hydrogen from hbr to form roh when h dot comes out br dot will be created so oxygen is now peaceful with having its octet complete and bromine being less electronegative than oxygen br dot is more stable than o dot so the whole system as a whole is stabilized so br dot is produced and that's how the first step gets completed that's how the chain is initiated now this br dot will go further in the reaction and that will propagate the chain but this two reaction these two reactions together constitute chain initiation step